y'all if this is thursday night it must be southern four-wheel drive associations tech net in this episode mike jay walter and bo are guest speakers okay but first let's cover a little bit of housekeeping we're gonna if you want to ask questions ask in the comments but preface your question with a cue, please. Also, by commenting, I would like to learn about, and you enter some off-road subject. During the TechNet live stream tonight, you'll be entered to win a weekly prize. So speaking of weekly prizes, last week's winner was Dan Allison. Dan's from Woodstock, Georgia, and he's gonna win uh, spider web shade trail sack, which is going to be filled with Morrison Outdoor Adventures goodies. So let's bring Mike on screen. What's up, Facebook world? How's everyone doing? Hope everyone's having an awesome week. So here we are at the TechNet again, and you guys know what that means. It's an opportunity to get entered again to win a set of not one, not two, not three, not even four, but five BFG tires. A full set of BFG KO2 or KM3 tires up to 37 inches. Al's going to release the details of what you have to do to be entered in the comments or during the live stream. So you have to watch the entire live stream in order to win. So once you see that, enter what he says to say into the comments, and it will enter you for a chance to win those tires at Dixie Run. You do not have to be present to win. BFG's been awesome in sponsoring this TechNet series, and we've been offering this since the beginning. I believe this is the 15th TechNet. So if you've been with us since the beginning, that gives you 15 chances to have your name in the hat to win that set of tires. And if you've been smart and paying attention, you also learned that you can go to www.sfwda.org and become a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association to get one more opportunity to get your name in the hat to win that set of tires. So make sure after this is over, if you're not a member, go sign up. It gets you a chance to win those tires. And we all know there are times on the trails where we need the ultimate traction and the BFG tires are the ones to give it to us. So. Without further ado, we're going to jump into the live stream here. Okay, so let me uh, briefly outline what we're going to talk about tonight. Mike's going to start off, and he's going to tell us about how to be prepared to go to Dixie Run or any other uh, off-road event. He's going to also tell us about the off-road experience session that Marks and Outdoor Adventures is going to conduct during Dixie Run. Following that, Jay, Bo, and Mike, and Walter 
they're going to come on screen and they're going to tell us about Dixie Run, how we're going to adhere to CDC guidelines, and how we're going to conduct our Dixie Run event. Following that, Bo's going to be on stage. He's going to tell us the benefits of registering for Dixie Run early. Then Walter's going to come on screen and tell us a little bit. He'll already be on the screen. He's going to tell us a little bit about Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. And, uh, and then Jay will tell us a little bit about Southern Four Wheel Drive Association's meet and ride. All right, guys. So while he's getting everyone up on the screen there, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the, the experiences that are available at Dixie Run. We're also going to talk a little bit about getting your rig prepared for the event. So those of you that have been in the past know that when you come through the gate and you register for Dixie Run, there is a tech inspection. So in that tech inspection, some of the specific things that those individuals be looking for as they go through your vehicle, they're going to be looking for a fire extinguisher. Super important, guys. you got to have a fire extinguisher in your vehicle. If your vehicle catches fire on the trails, you're not going to find enough dirt or water to throw on it. You need to have that fire extinguisher there, and it is required. Next step is they're going to look for a first aid kit. So you want to have a first aid kit. Having one in every vehicle that's easily accessible means that no matter where in the trail ride, if they need something, somebody can get to it relatively quickly. Also, they're going to be checking to make sure that your battery is tied down appropriately. Bungee cords don't work for this, right? You got to have that battery tied down doesn't have it can be the factory tie downs it can also be an aftermarket style tie down um, as long as that battery is tied down with something more sufficient than a bungee cord that works and then uh, they're also going to check to make sure that your vehicle has working seat belts and a proper roll cage if needed so don't show up with a vehicle with the top cut off and not have seat belts and no roll cage in it because that could be a problem right some of the other things we want to think about when coming to the event, go ahead and do that vehicle 360 that we talked about in one of our earlier episodes before you get there. That way you know that your vehicle is in proper operating condition to be on the trails. But when you're at the event, there are some things that you can do in the morning before jumping on your trail ride. A number one, we see this happen all the time, is someone gets to the trail ride, gets started, and they don't have enough gas to finish the trail ride. There's always that one person that says, hey, how long is this going to last? I only have a quarter tank of fuel. Make sure you have a full tank of fuel because once you're out in Windrock, it's not easy to get back to a gas station, and then we won't be able to get you back into the trail ride. So make sure that you have a full tank of gas each morning ready to go out on the trail. Next thing, make sure your recovery gear is in proper working order. Okay, and it's easily accessible. Let's not wait until the vehicle's stuck to have to go rummaging around underneath our camping equipment, cooler, all that stuff in the back of the rig to find our winch controller and straps and bow shackles and pulley blocks, right? Let's make sure all that stuff's easily accessible and we can get it and get it out. Make sure that your winch works before you even come to the event, right? So make sure it's connected properly. Go ahead and take your controller, plug it in, spool your winch out, spool it back in. Make sure your synthetic winch liner steel cable is in proper operating condition and suitable for use. If you, for some reason, can't get your winch working, you know, come find me at the event. I'm sure we can find uh, someone or I'll help you if we have some issues with it. But don't wait until you're on the trail riding stuck to say, hey, my winch doesn't work, guys. All right. <coughs> Make sure you have a tire repair kit on your vehicle. If you slice a tire, um, you do need a full-size spare, but tire repair kit, if you get a puncture in the tire or something like that, we can at least make a quick repair on the trail to get back from that. So make sure you have that tire repair kit handy. Um, we talked about that in the last episode. We showed a nice tire repair kit from ARB. So if you don't have one yet, go back and take a look, and you can see one of the best ones on the market to carry in your vehicle. So. That's just some of the odds and ends we want to think about before getting on the trail. Uh, make sure that you do carry plenty of water and snacks because uh, we all know anything can happen. Somebody breaks down, somebody gets stuck, and it turns into a long day. And especially if you have kids, you want to be able to take care of them while you're on the trail. Number one, a number one rule, though, since we are at Windrock Park, there is Windrock Park maintains a zero alcohol policy on the trails. They will inspect your coolers before you enter the trail system, right after the general store. 
if they see alcohol in your coolers, you're going to have to take it out, pour it out, get rid of it, do whatever, but they will not allow you to get on the trails until it is gone. So make sure that it, you don't have it in your coolers or your ARB fridge or whatever you've got on your vehicles when you go out. So those are just some of the things that we want to think about. Now we've got Bo, Jay, and Walter with us, and we're going to let them talk a little bit about the event. So a couple of things we got going. If you did not if you did not hear or, you, or if you're living under a rock, um, as soon as we announced registration was open, camping, uh, every camping spot, every um, – a place was within a 20 mile radius of Winrock was taken. So we worked with um, Winrock. Now Dixie Run's gonna be held at Winrock Hollow. That's where they hold the concerts. We're gonna have the big pavilion there, et cetera. They're opening up the parking lot area and all the parking lot around there so that we can actually have additional camping um, at there. So I saw a question about uh, trucks and trailers. We are gonna have spots for trucks and trailers. We'll have spots for camping. You can bring an RV. It's primitive camping in that area because most all the um, campsites are taken within a 20 mile radius of, of Dixie Run. It's going to be absolutely a blast. So we're excited. We do have to charge a little bit extra for that. So because we got to bring in porta potties and we got to bring in um, you know dumpsters for for garbage, etc. But it is the cheapest. You're not you're not going to find. Uh, Price that way, so we're ex very excited uh, uh, about that. Yes. Will you tell us a little bit about how we're going to uh, address the COVID concerns? Our events held outside, so because we're outside, we we are able to social distance. We are able to abide by the the regulations, um, etc. We are going to try to take additional steps to make sure so that there's there's no issues. So we're gonna ask the volunteers when they're working in a high touch area to be masked. We're gonna have gloves for the folks that are any, handling any food, all that kind of stuff. We've actually are, are working on uh, getting some panels like sneeze guards to when you're buying raffle tickets and all that kind of stuff so we can keep um, just, just in case so we can do that. Also, uh, Saturday night at the main raffle, we are going to try to social distance and put in lanes workway because we're going to have a real nice big area we can be in. We will be able to uh, social distance. We will be able to sit in groups. Now, you, if you want to sit next to somebody, that's perfectly fine. But we are going to have the option so that we can spread out. And if you need to be six to ten feet away from somebody, that's okay. I, what I would ask is, please don't mask shame anybody. If you think that you, you shouldn't be wearing a mask and somebody thinks they should be wearing a mask, let's just, let's just live and let live, at least for Dixie Run, have the spirit of Dixie Run. Um, we want to keep everybody safe, and we are trying to figure out different ways that we can do things. Um, one thing that was kicked around and we're still talking about is maybe doing the driver's meeting by CB if everybody has them, um, or, or, or different radios. So, Jay, I know our plans today have been based on the current CDC, state of Tennessee, and local guidelines. But we're, we'll, we're still, what, eight weeks out? So we'll yeah. take a look at those as we get closer and closer and adjust our plans according to their recommendations slash requirements, right? That's correct. If, if something comes down the pike, we're going to have to, we'll have to listen to what they do. One of the things is, you know, we have, we have, we have to have insurance for the event. And so some of the, some of this is driven by the insurance. We have different, uh, different notices and signs we have to put up, um, you know, saying that if you, you know, it's great that you're at the event, but remember, you know, uh, we want to minimize the risk of COVID and what we're trying to do to minimize that risk. Um, so if something else comes down the pike, we're paying attention to it. So if something else comes down the pike that we might have to do. Okay. So so let's throw it over to Bo now. And Bo, tell us about the benefits of registering early for Dixie Run. All right. So Mike explained about there's a tire set 
from BFG that's going to be given away from the TechNet. If you're one of the first 400 drivers over 18, um, the first 400 drivers will be registered to enter into a raffle to win another set of BFG tires. So hurry up, register early. We already have over 100 drivers have already registered, and there's already over 170 people registered to attend. So it's important that you register early. There's also, as Jay mentioned, the group camping. Um, register early. It's $15 for the whole event for camping. Um, you're not going to find that anywhere else that Jay mentioned, but you will find it on sfwda.org. Go into the event and look for the camping tab and register. If you've already registered for Dixie Run and you didn't have a campsite booked yet and you weren't sure, you can go back in and book your campsite. It's primitive camping. If you've got a trailer, you're going to be boondocking. Um, as far as I know, for availability, it's wide open, was a question from Cody Boone. Um, Cody, it's going to be a primitive camping. Um, so bring a tent. If you have a generator for your RV or trailer or whatever it is, um, you're going to need that because there's no electricity, no water. Um, so you need to have that. I uh, believe, uh, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, we will have access to the uh, to bathhouse. There are still a few of the event challenge coins. The early register guys already booked their special early register coin. Um, but there's still plenty of availability. Uh, we're looking for 400 drivers to enter this raffle for the other set of BFG tires. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Al. Um, let's, let's go back to Mark for just a minute. During Dixie Run, there's going to be an off-road experience held on Friday and Saturday, I think. Mike, are you ready to talk about that for a minute? Most definitely. So um, Southern Four Wheel Drive is working with Morrison's Outdoor Adventures to provide a off-road driving experience. And this basically uh, Friday is going to be open to anyone. This off-road driving experience on Friday, any drivers can sign up and come to the class. What it will be is a 45 minute to an hour class, kind of on the introductory to off-road driving. We'll cover some basic uh, driving techniques for different terrains. We'll talk about how different things in your vehicles work, like the differentials uh, and how the four-wheel drive systems work. From there, we will go out on a trail ride onto the trail so that we can practice these techniques that we've learned. So on Saturday, this is where it gets really exciting, right? Somehow we were able to rope Miss Morrison into being an instructor for a women's only class on Saturday. So on Saturday, we are gonna have women only drivers and we're gonna do the same exact thing with her teaching, basic driving mechanics, 45 minutes to an hour, then hitting the trails and husbands, you can come along, but you're in the passenger seat and you've gotta let the ladies do it. So. Ladies, if you spend all the time in the passenger seat, now's the opportunity to get in the driver's seat, get some instruction, become an excellent driver on the trails and have a great experience. So we will be going out for mostly the whole day. It is gonna be a full day experience that we'll spend out on both Friday and Saturday after the class is over. Um, there are no requirements other than the requirements to bring your vehicle to Dixie Run uh, and to be signed up. Other than that, stock vehicles are more than welcome. Highly modified vehicles are more than welcome. Even if you are not a beginner, okay, you've been off-roading for a long time, I can promise you that you will still learn something in the class. So it's a great opportunity to hone your skills uh, with trainers there. Hopefully I'll be able to bring a couple extra trainers, but we will spend some time out on the trails honing those skills. So that's what those experiences are going to be. Um, and we're really looking forward to doing it at Windrock this year. Okay, Walter, you're on, buddy. Tell, tell us about the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Equation. Super, awesome. Um, I will, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, give me just one sec, because the one thing that I'm also super excited about also with the Dixie Run event is our guided trail rides. 
Registration for those should be coming soon. Um, we're just ironing out details on that. But as a part of the Dixie Run registration, uh, as always, um, as all of our events, all these guided trail rides, as many as you want to partake in, uh, are included in the event admission entry fees. So uh, just keep that in mind and uh, stay tuned uh, for more details on guided trail rides. So, uh, yeah, so uh, to continue on, the uh, Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, um, awesome, huge event. Um, it's a vendor, it's a car show, it's a indoor air-conditioned event in the middle of the summer. Um, so uh, it draws a large crowd, and it's in a beautiful venue at, over there in the Comp Center, uh, located in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Um, so it is uh, coming up August 20th, 21st, and 22nd. It's now evolved uh, the, the, after eight years of growth now into a three-day event. So um, there has um, it, it's really grown into a massive event. There's tens of thousands of people that will be attending, and um, they all come in there with a the common theme of having a Jeep running through the blood. So... Um, there's a lot of deep things in there, but there's a lot of off-road enthusiasts as well um, that may not be as brand loyal, but um, appreciate the uh, vendors and the displays and all the exposure that's present on, a, on an event that draws that kind of a scale. So uh, there's a lot to see, a lot to do, and then one of the things that, uh, that we like to participate in and to offer for all the people that come out, uh, we've been doing it since the beginning. Uh, of Jeep Invasion now. We've been volunteering with them to help provide education, outreach as part of our mission, Total Drive, to help with the community um, with these uh, best practices in off-road. Um, and so we have uh, started off with the booth the first year, and then we evolved into a classroom setting uh, to be more intimate, and uh, we continue to still operate that classroom today. Uh, we'll have that all weekend long. Um, we're going to be posting schedule details here shortly, but uh, essentially when you come in through the event, um, take a moment of time um, to, uh, when you immediately enter the event, uh, right where the tickets are sold, uh, right there in that main lobby, you'll see our presence uh, just to your left-hand side. Um, that's where the classroom is located, uh, immediately left of the ticket booth purchasing. Uh, so you really can't miss us. And... Uh, We'll have some displays set up there uh, to stop by, grab a flyer. Uh, we'll have some details about the Dixie Run event as well. Um, so uh, Mike will be there. Uh, we've got a bunch of other volunteers that are going to be there. Bo's going to be there. Um, and, and some of our other board members as well are volunteering to canvas the event. Um, we're going to be hold, conducting classroom educational uh, uh, throughout the weekend. So. Um, Definitely something you want to take advantage of when you come and check out the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invention Invasion. Excuse me. Um, again, it's August twentieth through the twenty second. Um, great show. Definitely something to uh, bring the family to. Um, make a weekend event out of it and come and check out some of the volunteers from Southern Portal Drive. Stop by our classroom and uh, hope you all have a great weekend out there. Walter, where is that classroom located? So it's in the main concourse of the prime, the, the main building. As soon as the uh, right where the ticketing uh, purchase point is, um, it's everybody funnels into one point, no matter where you enter the building. And at that funnel point is where the tickets are sold. And this to the left of that ticket booth is where our classroom will be located. Great. Mike, I heard that you might be teaching some classes. There is a chance. Uh, I did hear a little birdie talk about possibly teaching some classes while we're there. Um, so we'll probably do something with recovery and high lift jacks while, while we are hanging out. So um, hopefully you guys will join us for that. Get some knowledge while you're there. Let's, let's do this. And I've not talked to anybody about this yet. Let's... Uh, each day, for anybody that attends our training, let's register them to win a spiderweb shade trail track. I like it. Sounds okay. good to me. So, so cool. funnel into that room. Hey, 
That's also a place to sit down and rest. There you go. Listen to Mike for a few minutes. Get your name in the hat. And at the end of the day, we'll, we'll draw one name and give away one trail side. Is that okay, everybody? Great. All right. That's right. You made a great point there, Al. Um, don't don't take don't undervalue the uh, uh, the seat whenever you're walking around a convention place like that scale. Um, sitting down in an air conditioned classroom feels real good to soak in some education off road. Look what Mike has, y'all. There it is. There we go. Yeah. In November, uh, there's another event at Daniel Boone Back Country Byway. And yes. the Back Country Byway is actually in existence thanks to Southern Polo Drive Association, I think. That's so, correct. Uh, tell us a little bit about the byway and then tell us a little bit about the uh, event that's been held up in November. Well, um, we have, um, we have. We've been working and, and fighting for the uh, Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway, keeping keeping the, the trails open. That's one of the things we we do Drive Association. And one of the things we've been fighting for the last many years is the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. And it's a it's a byway in in uh, Kentucky that's you know lots of different trails and a trail system. And um, it's just a fabulous, fabulous place. Um, so we are having, uh, we've got the fifth annual meet and ride going on the first weekend in November, November 6th through 7th. It's going to be at Hollywood Park, and they're going to do Hollywood Park, which is right there at Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. They're going to ride the Backcountry Byway. There is a whole bunch of, a um, uh, whole bunch of raffle prizes and stuff, lots of sponsors, all, a lot of the, the Kentucky clubs and all that, and um, registration is open for that, and you can register at uh, meetandgreetride.com. So that's meetandgreetride.com is where you register for that. Now, they raise money, and the money that's being raised at the Meet and Greet Ride is, is half going to Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway, and the other half is actually going to the Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. I want to do that, but all the trails are currently open and open to ride, so we're, we're looking forward to being able to ride this beautiful area in Kentucky. So, Bob, yes, outline sir. how I can become a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive. What are the advantages and what are the costs? All right. So, if you want to become a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive, you can go to our website, sfwda.org, and go to the membership tab. There's a couple of different levels of membership. Um, the first and easiest one is the individual membership. It's $10 for the year. Um, with your $10, you become a member. The next is the premium membership. Um, with the premium membership, you get access to some special rides when we have them, um, some special raffles. Uh, there's a lot of little special things that the premiums get. We're working on getting more premium gear in to ship out. As soon as I get those in, um, we're going to ship them out. This year, we're going to try and do something a little bit different. I won't spill the beans on that secret just yet um, for the premium members to make it easier to get their gear. If you're in a club, this is the most important, most exciting one. If you're in a club, it's $250 for your entire club. So if you're in a Jeep club and your club's not a Southern four-wheel drive club, nudge the people in the club. Tell them, hey, let's become club members. Um, if you have a business and you'd like to bring your business and be a vendor at one of our events, there's a $100 business membership. Um, there's a lot of great advantages. Uh, your logo is promoted on the, web on the website, southernfourwheeldrive.org, and the membership. And while you're there, make sure you register for Dixie Run and register for your camping. Uh, make sure you bring a friend, bring your wife, your kid. Kids under 16 are free. Um, so really, really, really nudge your buddy, nudge your friend, nudge your club mates. Hey, let's go ahead and buy that uh, Southern Four Wheel Drive club membership level because that is huge for Southern Four Wheel Drive. That allows us to do the conservation, education, and recreation that we do. So if, the, uh, if someone joins as a regular member or premium member, yes, sir. between now and September 15th, their name goes in the hat for yes. the set of tires that we're talking about here tonight. 
So if you become a member before Dixie Run starts, you're going to get an email that's got a special code in it. And that special code will also have a web link to enter you into a special drawing for, of course, the tires we all want, the BFGs. Um, so if you become a $10 member, individual member, or premium member, you are entered into that raffle for the BFG all, tires, which I really want. I want to say a huge, huge thank you to BFG. Um, they are such a big supporter of the Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. They have given us tires for the TechNet. They have given us tires for uh, membership. We are going to give away tires, um, uh, multiple sets of tires at the Dixie Run. It is, they are, they have stepped up to help us tremendously. Um, also, I don't know what they're going to do, but Warren said they're going to step up big time too. But we don't know what their big time is. But they are going to, they are there to support us. So the vendors are there. If you're a vendor and you're watching, and, and uh, I would, I, I please reach out to reach out to one of us. Um, all that. Um, always looking for volunteers. Our volunteer registration is going to be up fairly soon because we need to get volunteers for Dixie Run. We don't, you know, so if your club wants to volunteer or you need to volunteer, we will have the volunteer registration up fairly soon. Um, so um, just a big, big shout out to BFG. I, I can't say enough. They, they are just, I mean, they really help us um, with, with keeping the trails open to ride. That's, that's our big thing. So, Al? Thank you. Al, I think we've got some questions on here that uh, that we haven't quite answered yet. Um, if you're good to do some questions, I've got them right here. Let's do that. All right. So the first question I have asked uh, if uh, volunteer registration has been set up yet. Who's got the best answer for that one? Uh, volunteer registration has not yet been set up yet. Um, we're working out those details amongst our board uh, behind the scenes until we actually uh, develop a strategy uh, to get any of that uh, implemented. All right. Um, the next question I've got is from Doug Callis. He asked if uh, you can pre-purchase pre your park pass online or do you have to buy it at the general store when you're there? Um, at this time, you're gonna you're gonna have to buy it at the at the general store. That's how they are. I know Winrock is looking at a, an online way to purchase. They haven't done it yet, but uh, you will need to purchase your pass at uh, at at the general store or at some of the other places they that you can um, buy the pass. I know a lot of people have a yearly pass because you just go there a few times, and the yearly pass makes great sense. So, um, and they, then they have the two day pass and the one day pass. So, um, they would like us, they would like you to go to the general store or wherever you get your pass, but they're working on online. They're just not there yet. Awesome. Um, we had a question from Justin Stanley, anyone going to Appalachian Toyota Roundup, they usually donate to Southern four wheel drive association. Um, Justin, I will actually be there doing, um, classes at that event so sarah and i will be there i'm not sure if anyone else from southern four wheel drive will be there or not uh, but definitely feel free to come by and check us out other than that um oh cody boone asked if already a member but wants to upgrade to a premium do you pay the difference or the full amount for premium i'm gonna say no you have to pay the full amount it, we don't have a we don't have a mechanism to do a, anything different. All right, guys. So that's the last of our questions that I've got on here. Um, unless Al has anything to add, I'm going to go ahead and do the standard. Make sure, guys, that you continue to share this TechNet series with everyone. Right. So if you've missed some of our past videos, I've been kind of watching the comments here, and a lot of you have said you wanted to learn about different stuff. If you go back and check some of the past TechNet videos on YouTube or on the website, we've covered some of this stuff already. It's great information. But make sure you share all of this with your moms, your dads, brothers, sisters, dogs, aunts, hairdresser. It doesn't matter. Share it. 
get it out there. It only helps Southern Four Wheel Drive to spread the good word and helps us to continue doing what we do, right? So we want to educate, promote positive recreation and positive conservation, right? And that's Southern Four Wheel Drive's three core missions that we want to do. And we can only do that through your support. So we need you to share this and continue helping us grow. So other than that, Al, do you have anything left to add? Next week, it looks like we're going to have Dennis Woods from Terraplex. If y'all haven't watched any of his video, his Terraplex video, he's a hoot. So uh, tune in next week, and if everything pans out, we'll have Dennis. He's probably going to talk about little kids. Okay, anything special going on with Morrison's Outdoor Adventures in the next few weeks? So we have um, our next class coming up. If you are in the Asheville area, uh, August 19th, we will be at Asheville Vehicle Outfitters from 7 to 9 o'clock putting on a high lift class. It is a hands-on class. You can find out more details about it under our events tab on our Facebook page at Morrison's Outdoor Adventures. You also um, can check out uh, August 29th. We will have our first ever level one uh, four-wheel drive class at Patriot Mountain Off-Road Park in Boone, North Carolina. So we're really excited. Only 10 spots open, and I think we've sold about half already. So if you're on the fence about doing something like that, go ahead and sign up. That one's under our events tab too. It is $175 uh, for the first initial driver, and then passengers over the age of 15 are $75, and they can drive while they're there. So Make sure that uh, if you're interested in bringing a passenger, you reach out to us. But it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be an eight-hour eight class, and Patriot Mountain's a pretty cool park as well. Very good. Okay, let's say goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.